you, Senator Catwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to ask Mr. Uh, 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 Pickle about the, the Coast Guard Authorization Bill, uh, which was part of the NDA bill last year, um, includes a number of provisions to improve identification and enforcement of illegal fishing and forced labor in the fishing industry. Um, as you know, many agencies have a role in combat combating this, NOAA, CBP, and the Coast Guard. One provision requires uh, the aim to improve identification of forced labor at sea by training federal officials so they can identify forced labor on the ground. When those officials ultimately identified the forced labor, where will that data go? How will we inform law enforcement about the flow of those goods? Uh, thank you, Senator. So I, I'm not familiar personally, I'm, as I'm, I'm not in that particular role anymore within the government. Um, what I would what I would point out specific to IUU fishing concerns um, is that there are responsibilities spread across several agencies, and that there are tremendous opportunities to improve information sharing, um, as well as joint training programs, particularly between DHS and the Department of Commerce and NOAA. Uh, it, in that regard, I think that gets to your question in terms of making sure that the information is readily available to make sure that the the identification of suspect shipments um, is specifically identified at the point that it hits U.S. ports. Yeah, you you hit on it. That's what I want interagency right. coordination because it's you know it's it's a joint effort and they have to share the data and information so that we can uh, grow our capacity here. Mm -hmm. And I think one other item I would add to that, ma'am, is um, is to identify opportunities for engagement with industry, um, so that you're you're getting the full picture of what that industry looks like and how those how those commodities are coming into the U.S. market, um, so that those agencies have the benefit of that insight. Great, thank you, Ms. Smith. You have welcome. Um, you have experience both at CBP and uh, in, in technology issues. Technology can increase customs clearance efficiency in many ways, but you still have to have staffing and resources. Do you have a view on the general staffing and resources capacity at our um, customs clearance at our seaports today? Do you have recommendations on what we should do to improve that? I do, and thank you for the question. Um, CBP is known by its people in blue, the uniform, but what I would call out are the, the um, significant number of trade specialists, analysts, auditors, and attorneys that sit behind the uniformed force, that have a lot of the customs competencies um, that help ensure both trade enforcement and trade facilitation. As I noted in my initial statement, um, the investment in CBP workforce writ large since the events of 9-11 has been tremendous, but the investment in the non-uniformed trade specialist has been relatively minimal, aside from the tremendous investment made this past year in the forced labor capability. I believe very strongly that um, the agency needs to have the bandwidth to be able to think through what a modernized customs process looks like, implement the regulations, the processes, and the technology. And to do that, you not only need to have sufficient numbers of personnel, but they need to be well-trained um, in the legal frameworks, but also in how mo modern business works every day. And uh, Cindy Allen mentioned the concept of bi-directional education. I think there are many companies, including my own expediters of Washington, um, that are interested in working with the government to be sure that we understand what the government is looking for and the government understands how business works on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you think there's a number there? I, I long ago proposed increasing at USTR the number of lawyers because I was like, well, the amount of uh, deals that we're doing outside the United States, so if you don't have lawyers to go down to Chile or whatever and talk about illegal timber or if you don't have people. And so we've literally fought for our, you know, businesses and consumers because we up to the legal capabilities at USTR. Is there some capacity build that we need to do here now at CBP that would do, do the same, you know, understand the complexity and volume? Yes, 100%. Um, the numbers that I often use is in, in my career in trade the last 40 years, trade has, has multiplied 32 times. So I think it wouldn't be... Um, out of the out of consideration to to double the the customs workforce, 
the numbers I used when I was at CBP were, uh, there, were there are about 3,000 um, non-uniform personnel that do trade on a full-time basis. Doubling that to 6,000 um, would make a tremendous difference in their ability to modernize, facilitate, and enforce. And you're talking about distribution throughout the U.S. with our major ports and things right. of that nature to help catch this illegal activity. That's right. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.